Welcome back, everybody, to another State of the Market 2022. My name is Scott Zano with Scott Zano Realty Group and Keller Williams Luxury Real Estate. First and foremost, we hope that everyone is still continuing to stay safe. Yes, COVID is still out there and people are still getting sick. So do the best you can. Uh, if you have to wear a mask here or there, so be it. Uh, so we just want to make sure that everyone's staying safe and healthy so we can get ourselves out of this mess. I've got a ton of information for you today. So thank you so much for tuning in to another State of the Market. We do these every month. So we're going to be uh, doing for the month of March. Uh, the numbers are, are in and um, we want to share those numbers with you. We get a lot of exciting information for you today. So let's get right down to it. And uh, let's uh, let me uh, just share my screen here with you. So uh, we normally talk about the four quadrants, right? We talk about active listings, days on market, closed listings, and um, the uh, months of supply, right? So the first one here that we're going to be talking about here is the average uh, or median sale price. And we'd like to go three months back. So the end of March, we're at 582000 uh, as the average sale price here in Bonstable County. So... Um, all these numbers that we're going to be going over for you are basically from uh, Provincetown to Plymouth. That's you know pretty much Bonsonville County and the MLS that we're going to be talking about here and all those um, numbers and uh, transactions. So 582 is your um, uh, median sales price. Uh, last month in February was 595, so it dropped a little bit. And then in January, it was around uh, 600,000. So based on this graph, uh, the um, median uh, sales price has dropped from 600 back in January to 595 down to about 582. So prices might be starting to plateau off a little bit, maybe drop a little bit. All right. So uh, let's talk about our next quadrant here, which would be uh, actual uh, listings. So these are the amount of listings that are actually for sale. So you can see when everyone talks about we go, low inventory, low inventory. Yeah, it really is low inventory. We're down to 356 properties. But I want you to see something right here. Uh, just back in February, we were at 330. Today, we're at 356. Now, that's 26 properties more than last month. But you see that? That upward right there? that is a good indication that more properties are perhaps coming on the market. All right. So maybe next month it, it might be up over here, you know, up in the 400 range. Okay. Uh, we desperately need inventory. That's the situation that we're in right now. Everybody wants to capitalize on the low interest rates, which we're going to talk about, um, but there's just not enough inventory to go around. So sellers if you're interested in uh, selling your property, please uh, keep us in mind. Um, we'll give you some information at the end on how to reach us. Uh, but that's the situation right now with low inventory, 356 units. So Scott, if you're just tuning in and you've never seen any of our state of the markets, uh, is that a lot or a little bit of inventory? Well, I'm gonna show you something here real quick. We're gonna go back to March of, wow, well, let's say we can go back to March of 2021, just a year ago. We had 535 units, okay? And if we went back uh, to um, March of 2020, uh, that number would have been closer to about 1,700 units, 1,800 units, all right? So what happened is uh, March of uh, 2020, COVID kicked in. A lot of this, this decline that you see right here, this is all COVID right here where homes were getting sold and come off the market. And then... You can see here that they've been climbing up. And August of 2021 was uh, um, uh, 773 homes. And then it's just been kind of dropping off month after month. And we're down over here to 356 properties. Uh, let's take a look at sold uh, or closed listings, um, closed sales. So last month, 296 closed, which was a rebound from 227 in February. Again, that's just lack of inventory. These numbers are uh, usually much higher in the five, 600 range, but uh, you can't sell from empty shelves, right? So um, one of the highest uh, closed months that we had was um, 
let's see, back here in September of 2021, 538 units. Days on market, let's talk about that. So this is how many days on market your property will uh, be on the market before it goes on the contract. This is just a guideline. We've had properties that sell over the weekend. Yes, we've had properties that have been on the market for 14 or 21 days, which is not a long time. But at the end of the day, the average is going to come out at seven days uh, on market. So extremely low days on market. That tells us there's a lot of buyers out there. When these houses are coming on the market, they're going under contract very quick. So let's see, March was at seven days on market, right? Uh, February was 12. So we went from 12 and uh, the market picked up even more in March uh, to seven days. And then in January, it was 13. All right. A typical days on market, you know, might be been back here, even back before this in uh, February uh, 2020. You know, the average days on market was 45, 50 days on market, which was a normal market. And then you can see just houses are just getting picked up. Uh, very quickly here and the uh, average days on market that we're sitting at is seven. I don't know how much lower we can go on the days on market. The houses are just getting uh, uh, sold uh, uh, at a very, very rapid rate. So let's talk about months of supply. So months of supply tells us what kind of market that we're in. So typically, you know, six months or more of inventory, that's going to be a buyer's market. Uh, say uh, four to uh, maybe yeah four to five mark four to five months it might be like a neutral market and then under four months of inventory is going to put you at a seller's market so we're sitting at less uh less than one month of inventory here in March so it's definitely uh that's right a seller's market so let's see March was uh, less than a month February again about uh, less than a month and January so the last three months. You know, it's showing us that um, months of supply have been less than a month and it continues to be a, a seller's market. So back here, you can look back and see, you know, it's been a seller's market for almost a couple of years now. You can see 1.5, 1.3, 1.2. The goal is to get more inventory into our database so the buyers have more inventory to pick from. Uh, but when you're sitting here at less than four months of inventory for almost two years, uh, and now we're sitting at less than a month of inventory. It's just telling you one thing. The market is uh, very, very hot right now. And there's a lot of buyers out there um, uh, picking up these houses at a very quick rate. Um, so you're sitting at less than a month here. So you got a little blip here going went from 0.8 to 0.9. You know, um, you know, maybe next month uh, in April, maybe it'll be a month and a month and a half. Uh, um, of months of supply. It's still going to be a seller's market. I personally see it as a seller's market for the, the whole end of this year. Uh, we just don't have enough inventory uh, for things to kind of crash, so to speak. Uh, there's not enough properties on the market and there's more, uh, more buyers than there are sellers. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's take a look at the percentage of list price. So this here tells us... Um, so percentage of list is a percentage of list to sales price. So if you list your house for $100, typically before COVID, the average agent would bring maybe $97 or $98 uh, towards that $100 sale, right? Because there actually was some negotiating going on back then. Um, today, if you list your house for $100, based on these stats, they're telling us that you should get $100. Okay, you should get 100.4% of what you're asking for. Now, when you go back to February, that was 100%. So um, the, the sellers actually uh, got more money in March than they did in February based on their um, percentage of list to sales price. All right. And then in January, it, it sat at 100. So January was 100. February was 100. March went up to 100.4. Here's where the craziness was happening more back in June, you see this here. Uh, let's go over 100 here. So uh, May, 102, June, 103, and then it dropped off a little bit, 102, and now we're back to 100% of asking price. These are well over asking price uh, months here, back here, okay? And so that takes care of those quadrants there. What I want to do next is I want to get into some of my slides. I get some dynamite slides here for you. I'm going to get into right here. Um, 
And what I want to do is get you right here. So we're going to talk about the impact of the rising mortgage rates on the housing market. Everyone knows that the rates have gone up and they are going to probably continue to go up a little bit more and maybe not as quick or as fast as they have recently. But um, uh, the professionals out there and the uh, everyone that we listen to and the economists and uh, all the real estate gurus, they're all predicting that it's just going to continue to go up a little bit more uh, by the end of the year. So let's take a look at that and see what's happening. So impact of rising mortgage rates on the housing market. This is what's happening. So this is from January of 22. So this is just, you know, three months ago. So uh, a 30 year fixed rate, right, was 3.22. And you see how these rates went up every little bit, you know, an eighth, a half, a quarter, a half, okay? Now here we are today at 4.67. Just three months ago, it was 3.2. So that's almost a point and a half. They weren't predicting interest rates to be until 4% until the end of the year. Okay. We're already well past the 4% rate. So my philosophy is why wait? Don't pay more if you have to. Jump in, get a piece of property that you like um, and that you want to um, feel proud to own. You know, Don't just buy anything but also try to get in now before the rates go even higher. Um, Cause what's gonna happen is gonna price a lot of people out of the market. So the rule of thumb is, right? We've heard this before and we've talked about it. Every time the interest rate goes up 1%, your buying power goes down 10%. So for instance, this guy over here at back in January, um, at 3.22, let's say that that guy was looking at a, say a half million dollar house, right? at 3.22. Well, when it got to 4.22, which is somewhere right in here, okay, he's no longer going to be able to buy a $500,000 house. He's now looking at a $450,000 house or she. Okay. So the more those interest rates go up, the less your buying power goes down. That makes sense, right? So let's take a look at this next slide here. Mortgage rates are likely to continue to move higher throughout the balance of 22, although the pace of rate increases is likely to moderate. Much of the increase in rates in early 2022 is in anticipation of what will happen later this year, especially with the Federal Reserve interest rate policy. All right, I'm gonna go to number 11. So history suggests that when interest rates rise, there is an initial bump in home prices as many move quickly to buy a home before the rates increase further. But after that period, home prices slow down. Freddie Mac analysis shows that a 1% increase in mortgage rates results in home price appreciation that is 4% points lower. For instance, a 1% increase in mortgage rates would change home price growth from 11 to seven. So right now they're predicting a 9% um, uh, increase in home prices. So what they're saying here is if the interest rate goes up another point, it's going to decrease um, the, the the price of homes will come down um, 4%. So that nine will go to say the 5% increase versus the nine that they're projecting. Typically before COVID in real estate, your house usually went up about three to 4% a year. Okay, they're predicting the nine, but then with the higher interest rate, they're predicting maybe it'll only go up around 5% this year, which is still higher than normal. All right, let's take a look at number 12. Uh, with rates rising, expected to rise to 2023, makes sense to obtain a purchase or refinance mortgage if you are in good standing. So if you're able and willing to, to qualify for a mortgage, they're suggesting that you do something sooner rather than later. Um, interest adds up, okay? At the, when you start adding interest up over 30 years, uh, just a half or a point or a point can make a big difference, all right? Especially over the 30 years. So let's talk about the spring housing market update. And um, so uh, we keep watching for it, but there are absolutely no signs of a market slowdown anywhere in the data. I haven't seen anything that says that there's gonna be a slowdown. People are talking about it but I don't see the data to back it up. Today, we're here to talk about it and show you what the data is, is saying out there so that you can make an educated uh, decision, right? So our job as real estate agents is to 
uh, make it a win-win for everybody. And our job is to educate all of our buyers and sellers so that we're the smartest people at the closing table, okay? Smart decisions go a long way in real estate, all right? So here we go. Uh, it says, uh, we'll keep watching for it, but there's absolutely no signs of a market slowdown anywhere in the data. If anything, we're seeing the market continue to heat up, especially today, because we're in spring market, all right, where people are back from traveling, back from vacations, and they're thinking about that second home. So uh, this makes perfect sense. Okay. We go to here to slide 17. Active listings increased for the first time in six months. We talked about that before on my other slide. So this is in thousands, okay? So in March, we increased our inventory across uh, the United States by uh, to 382,000 properties that were for sale. Again, that's the United States. It was at 376. So we got a little bit of an increase across the board in inventory. And that slide exactly matches our previous slide that I had for the Boston County. This is nationally. So that's a good sign that there are more active listings uh, that came on the market in March. And that's the first time in six months. Okay, so maybe we're on to something. Let's take a look at number 18. I says, uh, now more industry insiders are throwing out their previous forecasts and replacing them with more bullish short-term outlooks. Indeed, some experts say that the 2022, excuse me, spring housing market might go down as one of the most competitive on record. And we're seeing that now. If you have a piece of property under the price of say 600,000 and it's in good condition and it's priced right, that property will sell over the weekend, almost guaranteed, because there's so many people out there looking to capitalize on these low rates and get a piece of real estate before it prices them out of the market. Look, at I go back a couple of years ago with some of my buyers that wanted to spend you know, X amount of dollars, and today they cannot buy a house because they don't qualify for it anymore. The prices have gone up so much and the rates have gone up recently. It's completely put them out of the housing market, so they're going to have to stay uh, renting, which is, I don't like to see anybody have to rent if they don't have to. So this is already going down as the uh, most competitive on record um, for uh, the housing market here in the spring. Let's go to number 25. So this is uh, single family housing uh, units that are completed. So this is for new, brand new construction. So this is one of the reasons why our inventory is so low is the uh, new construction numbers uh, across the board uh, over the last 14 years, you can see here, have been below average as far as new building permits being pulled and new construction being put up. This is here, the more of the average, okay? So like, uh, let's just go back 10 years, right? Let's go back 10 years from 2020 to 2010. Uh, well, we have to go back a little bit more here. So in five or 2005, you can see that there was a big building boom, right? And then 2007, 2008 came along. Uh, things weren't looking so good in real estate and new construction took a back seat and it's been very low and now it's starting to make a comeback. So you can see here that over the next few years, I would expect a lot more new permits being pulled and a lot more new housing being built. So we're on the upward uh, stretch here on new housing uh, being built, which will help inventory across the board because that's been one of the biggest issues is there's no new construction, uh, at least around here around the Cape. Uh, maybe down south you see more, but um, not around here. So let's go to number 27. So uh, this is a very, very interesting slide. So um, I had a conversation today with a couple of my buyers and, you know, they're, uh, you know, obviously concerned about the market and the pricing and interest rates and things like that. But here's a slide that you definitely want to pay attention to. So what they're saying here is potential growth in household wealth over the next five years based solely on increased home equity. If you purchased a house, a uh, $360,000 home in January of 22. So if you bought a house just three months ago, okay, and you paid 360,000. If you paid 750, they just double these numbers, okay? If you paid just 360,000, what they're saying is over the next 
five years, okay, that that property is going to go up in equity value almost $96,342 over the period of next five years. So if people say, I'm going to sit on the guidelines, I'm sit on the sidelines, and I'm going to wait a year or two until the prices come down, how much did it cost you to sit on those sidelines and wait? Well, if you bought a house for 360 and you wait two years, that's um, about 60, uh, let's see here, uh, about uh, $55,000, $60,000 that you would have lost in equity. And why pay more if you don't have to, right? Why pay more if you don't have to? So this slide here really hits home with me as far as buying something and then where the values are gonna go and how much uh, equity that you're gonna gain on a $360,000 house in five years, they're saying that property is gonna be worth 456,000, which is $96,000 uh, in equity. That's a substantial amount of money to leave on the table. Let's talk about number 28, home forecast, home price forecast uh, for 2022. Typically, uh, uh, pre-COVID, uh, like I said, most home prices went up 3 to 4%, okay? So last year, we saw about a 20% increase. So here's some of the different uh, forecasts for some of the uh, players out there and what they're predicting. So CoreLogic uh, is 9.6% 9, 9 increase in sales price. HPES 9%, Fannie Mae 7.6, MBA 6.6, Freddie Mac is predicting 6.6 .6 in uh, home price growth over 2022. NAR is at 5.1 and Zellman is at 3%. So what I've been reading is it's going to be closer to here, 9%. And if those interest rates continue to climb another point, that could that 9% could drop down to maybe around four or five percent, uh, but the average is going to be around 6.7. So based on these numbers here, if you were to buy a piece of property this year, on average, it's going to go up 6.7. The normal is three to four. Okay. Let's take a look at number 36. So this is the home sales. Uh, this is just shows you uh, nationally how many days on market houses are selling for. We did our uh, days on market here in the Plymouth County, uh, Basel County, and it was only seven days on market. But nationally, if you look at this across from coast to coast, it's 18 days on average. And you can see some of the uh, st states here, the dark blue, mostly everything is dark blue and uh, royal blue. And so uh, up to 15 on the dark blue, and the navy blue has been 15 to 30 for a, na a national average of 18, all right? This is all good stuff, right? So um, having this knowledge gives you power to make the right decisions. And that's all we want at the end of the day. We just want people to make the right decision that's right for them. Um, we know it's frustrating out there um, for sellers and buyers and real estate agents, appraisers, uh, the list goes on and on. So we know that this is a difficult time right now, but you know, you got to stay positive, stay in touch with your agent, uh, stay in touch and read as much information as you can get a grip on some of the uh, different stuff that's on YouTube and the news and make your own decision because everybody has an opinion, right? So uh, that's why I love doing these uh, state of the markets every month because things change quickly in the real estate business. And I want to keep you guys abreast to everything that's happening, almost like you got your thumbprint on the market, except for I'm doing all the work for you and just kind of relaying the information. So this is new home sales. Uh, again, this is going back to new construction. And you can see that um, they're annualized here in thousands. So we're sitting here right here around 760,000 annualized uh, new home sales. And so let's take a look at number 54. Uh, let's see here. So year over year and, and price percent change. So last year, 20% was the uh, mark. The market was up 20%. Again, normally before COVID, it was right three to four to 5%, right? This year, they're predicting maybe 9%. So right now, this year, they're predicting uh, 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 keeping current matters is uh, uh, forecasting a 5% increase in price this year. And I tend to agree with that. 
somewhere between the five and the nine. It all depends on how uh, much more these interest rates continue to go up. Let's go look at number 59, and then we get ready to wrap it up, guys. This is uh, months of uh, inventory of homes for sale in the last 12 months. So this goes back to um, what kind of market we're in, buyer's market, seller's market, or a neutral market. So we're down to 1.7 months of inventory. So that is a seller's market, right? Anything less than four months of inventory, all right? Over the last 12 months, it's been a seller's market because it's under the four range, right? So four is up here, four months of inventory. And so they, we've been staying well below that 2.6, 2.5. And now we're down to just a measly 1.7 months of inventory, which is making it a seller's market. We need inventory, <laughs> right? That's what it comes down to. We need inventory. Um, so number 68, let's get number six. Let's talk about the mortgage rates real quick. So this one here is telling us today, again, we, we touched on this earlier here, 30 year fixed rate um, uh, is 4.67, all right? And these, um, this graph goes back to uh, 2018, right? Starts over here at 2018 at about 4%. Things went uh, up as much as five, maybe back in 19, and then they've been on a down, a down slide. Uh, we've had some amazing interest rates over the last couple of years, I remember seeing rates like 2.75 and 2.99 and 3.2. And those are just over the last little bit of been kind of uh, going up a little bit. And then you see here just recently, just since January, it shot up right here to 4.6. All right. So that's where we are today. 4.6. All right. Let's look at number 70. This is the mortgage rate projections. So we're already past a lot of these projections. So these numbers are going to get changed and revised over time. So uh, uh, let's see. So uh, let's see here. Uh, third, uh, third quarter, uh, they're predicting 3.9. We're already at 4.76. And then the fourth quarter at the end of the year, around 4%, but we're already past that. And then uh, they're already looking into 23, the first quarter, 23 and the second quarter of 2023. So try not to pay more than you have to. Interest costs money over 30 years. It's a lot more than you think, okay? And let's talk about slide number 71 real quick. So again, interest rates, where they've been, where they are today, and then where they're predicted to go. Again, these numbers need to be recalculated because we're already past the 3.9 and standing here at 4.76 today. I think I saw something today that they were actually going over a little over five. So there you have your state of the market for March, 2022 for Bonsville County, Plymouth to Provincetown. We thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule and walk with us. Um, again, we appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, big or small, our door is always open. You guys know that. Give us a call. You got my number. It's 508-566-0051. Or shoot me an email at, um, I got a new email now. <laughs> it's uh, Scott at Scott uh, group, uh, dot com. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. And we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.